Luckily, also too big for a cheetah. There's no way a cheetah would mess with a giraffe. No. This is a reticulated giraffe right in front of us. His name is Nicolich. And I know because his ossicones, which is the name of the horns on giraffe, kind of point out a little bit like antenna. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> They're like, oh, she's talking about us. <laughs> so you see this fence right here. Um, it's a little awkward. Maybe you like, mm, wasn't always there, and you're right. So what happened is, they, this flock was supposed to have in the whole thing, and they weren't making nests. They weren't making nests. They cared. We were just going to be to support the zoo with breeding areas for animals. And one of the main things that they did from the beginning was lay the place out so that the water areas were in places where water would naturally collect. So this lagoon not only is a habitat for tons of native birds, but it is also a place where we store water when it rained a lot on us in January, February, March. We stored it in here and now we draw Dry from this to water. Why do they have a white circle target right around their rear end? It's called a follow me mark. So the idea being that the babies in the herd Keep an eye on the white circles. So if you're a baby, your head's down, you're eating a bunch of grass, you look up, all the white circles are getting smaller. You better go that way. But also because they wanted to see these big open habitats and imagine dinos instead of rhinos. Mm -hmm. But of course we don't have real dinosaurs, but we do have the closest modern relative. We have birds over here. Under the tree, my favorite, the vultures. Super cool. We actually have three different species of African vulture out there. So the one un next to the fence is called a cape vulture. The ones that look like they're wearing little feather boas, those are called the griffin vultures. And then the ones with the red heads are rapid. They're going fast. Those are called springbok. They look like gazelles, very similar to gazelles. They're the only animals out in this area that would actually be running away from a cheetah. And like I mentioned, cheetahs only go that fast in a straight line, so these animals do that. They because 
because these animals live in areas with lots of food and lots of hills and trees and bushes, they tend to spread out a lot of the time. And when it's time to come to mating season for the Yukonda cob, sometimes they can't find anybody because <laughs> they're so spread out. So they've developed a pretty smart structure. It's basically speed dating. What they do is, at the same time every year, they all get together in the same place. And the males set up little temporary mini territories all around each other and display and show off and fight. And then the females come and shop for a mate. And then after that, everybody that's what they look like when they're full size. These are juveniles. So the, the females are that tan color and they don't have horns. The males, when they're fully mature, are black and white. <laughs> and they pair up, uh, they keep their bond for a very long time, and the way that they do that is by making up kind of like a secret handshake. So they make up a little dance that they do together every day. It's different for each pair. And so like the ones in the back, they have a dance, these guys have a dance, it's not the same for the whole species. And they do it together every day. Oh, that's so cute. Down here, these kind of goose. 